Welcome to segment two of the Bible says this. What say you? Psalms 33 verse four. The A clause says for the word of the Lord is right. My friends right here with me is the first assistant now, to the pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, my uh, trusted first assistant, the Elder John Amanchuku, who happens to be my son-in-law, doing a tremendous job. Thank you for joining me in the first segment. And hey, man, thank you for hanging around for this second one. We're excited about it, Bishop. Praise the Lord. We have some great things to cover in this segment. Let's go at it. All right. Now, we're going to jump into this. John revealed who I was talking about in the previous segment. He revealed that we were talking about the good Reverend uh, Barber. Uh, Reverend Barber had some comments to say, and I want to read uh, 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 a letter that he wrote. He didn't write the letter to me, but the letter's made public. The letter was written to the Reverend Jack Graham, Johnny Moore, Greg Laurie, Paula White, uh, Franklin Graham, Jerry Falwell Jr., and others. It says, I write with a heavy heart as a fellow Christian and a fellow preacher during a trying time in our nation's public life. Last week on Capitol Hill, Capitol Hill po police arrested me along with other clergy people with health care issues uh, outside of Senator Mitch M McConnell's office. It's amazing that people still have health care issues after eight years of uh, Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act. I thought that was designed to be the cure all. He says we were arrested doing what, what you and I do every week in our pulpits, over our dinner tables, and in the public square. Reading the word of God, attempting uh, last to let the spirit speak its ancient truth mm. through me uh, into the present. Man, we could have used you whenever we were fighting against same-sex right. marriage and, and we, we were fighting to keep marriage from being redefined uh, and, try, and trying to protect the definition of marriage in North Carolina. Oh, in that bout. He was there, but he was opposing it. That's right. It would have been good to let the scripture speak then, Reverend. While we may differ on biblical interpretations, we do share a common effort to understand God's word and discern God's will. I have noted your doubtless sincere public statements in recent months uh, that such gospel proclamation is needed in America. I listen as President Trump signed his executive order on religious freedoms, praising the prophetic legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King mm. Jr., Praising, that is, the prophetic legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I watched as you applaud, echoing his sentiment in public statements and letters to your supporters and celebrating an administration that is willing to listen to your counsel. Like millions of Americans, I saw the photo uh, that included several of you praying for the president, praying for President Trump in the Oval Office last week, asking God to give him guidance. The nation needs our prayers, and no doubt the president does too. But the scripture cautions us to lay hands on no man suddenly, lest we become party a party to his sins. First Timothy chapter two and verse twenty-two. Now everybody knows that First Timothy Timothy chapter two and verse twenty-two is a warning against endorsing someone too quickly. It warns against endorsing someone and participating in their ungodly behavior. That's not what was going on uh, in the Oval Office and that is not the meaning here of laying on of hands. Right. This is not a warning that you shouldn't pray for the president too quickly. I think we should pray for people as fast as we can. That's you right. know, Bible says we're to pray without ceasing. And and, and my the Elder Armatruz, he's going to jump in in just a minute, but listen to this. He says, the teachings of Jesus are clear about caring for the poor, the sick, and we are called to share his message. We cannot simply serve as chaplains to imperial power. Was that true for the last eight years? I hope that it was. If we pray for a person engaging in injustice, we must offer prayers that lead to conviction. So uh, did you pray, uh, Reverend Barber, that God would convict our president who said to Planned Parenthood, God bless you? Mm -hmm. 
as Planned Parenthood uh, slaughtered more babies than any industry in America, parent, Planned Parenthood, it has killed, killed more blacks every two weeks than the Klan did in its entire history. Did we pray that God convict the president who said to Planned Parenthood, as long as I'm in the White House, you have a friend? I hope you did. Uh, engage it in, in injustice. We must offer prayers that lead to conviction, not prayers that further embolden them in their wrongdoing. And since faith comes by hearing, we must speak prophetically and truthfully to them about using political power to influence public pain. If they refuse to listen, we must put legs on our prayers and demand that those leaders uh, attend instead uh, to, to the weightier matters of love, justice, and mercy. Hence, I am troubled by your silence and lack of guidance as the president and his political allies in Congress attempt to deconstruct America's health care system. Now, it, it, one of the things that amazes me is that you can't disagree with liberals without not caring. Right. Now, everybody knows uh, if, if you if you this listening audience. Go out and Google President Obama. You will see footage after footage that tells you that what President Obama actually wanted was a single-payer health care system, and the single-payer is the government. That is, he want to put all of us on a system that mirrors uh, the VA, and we see what happened to uh, our wonderful dis disabled veterans and the lack of care that took place. The Affordable Care Act is, is actually functioning the way it was designed, it was supposed to fail uh, at the end of the president's term to implode under its own weight. But the, the, the benefit would be uh, Hillary would be the president. And once she won, she would say, hey, you see, we've tried other things. Nothing works. So we're going to go to the single payer system, which President Obama wanted. And most liberals, they want all of us to be on a system like Medicaid. Everybody to get government funded health care, which would be, to use a famous uh, term now, a disaster. <laughs> so therefore, the Affordable Care, uh, care Act is imploding. And because there are people who believe that there may be a different approach, these people are accused of being unscriptural, uncaring, and uh, hang on, hang on, that we shouldn't even pray for them. Right. And if we pray for the president, it borders on theological male practice. It is theological male practice that borders on heresy. To quote the good reverend, it is a form of theological male practice that borderlines on heresy, Barbara said, when you can P-R-A-Y for a president and others while they P-R-E-Y praying on the most vulnerable. You are violating the sacred principles of religion. Now, we do know about praying on the most vulnerable. A Planned Parenthood is an expert on that. They'll tell you how to pull the head out without, without destroying body parts so they can sell them. So we know all about praying on the most vulnerable. And why is it that just because someone may believe right. that there's a different solution than just throwing money at the poor, that, that maybe we could come up with something else that may be a little different that we're accused of not hearing. Jump into this, Reverend. What, what are your well, thoughts on this? And I haven't finished reading this quote. We'll talk about it. Let me hear right. from you here. For him to call it uh, theological malpractice to pray for uh, uh, President Trump, you know, the Bible says in Ezekiel 18 and 4 okay. that, Behold, all souls are mine. Wow. And that's clear. Oh, yes. All souls are mine. Then yes. it goes on to say that the soul that sins, mm -hmm. it shall yeah. die. Yes, sir. So regardless of the spiritual condition of a soul, God loves that soul. Right. And we should pray for that individual. Yes, sir. And we should wish that person well and pray that even if they may be going in the wrong direction. Right. That, we, that God will turn them in the right direction. Amen. If Amen. they're going in the right direction. Right. Our prayer should be that God give them strength to continue going forward. Mm. I believe that Reverend Barber is having what I call the case of the Jonas. All right. All right. All right. Now, the God, case of the Jonas. All right. God spoke to Jonah and told him in Jonah chapter one, um, chapter one, verse two, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. And we know that Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. Yes. 
by the um, the Jews said that it was the land of Nimrod. Right. And we know how evil Nimrod was. Yes. He wanted to challenge God and to build the Tower of Babel, uh -huh. making it so high so God couldn't stop it and thwart it and cause it to be flooded. All right. Exactly. Exactly. But then God says, go and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me. Mm. But Jonah didn't want to go. Mm -mm. Jonah didn't go. Mm -mm. So, God, so Jonah got on a ship. We find, we find Jonah on the water. And I want to tell Reverend Bob, I hope you're not going fishing this summer because there might be a whale in the water. <laughs> they, take, they take Jonah and they throw him overboard and he's swallowed up by a whale. Right, right, and then right. um, uh, God says in uh, Jonah chapter 2 verse 1, it says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his mm -hmm. God out of the fish's belly. Yes, he did. Yes, Jonah he did. prayed in the belly of a whale. Yes, he did. Now, yes, if you can did. pray in the belly of a whale, surely you can pray in the over office. Exactly. But Jonah's exactly. problem is this. I'll make it clear. Yes, sir. Jonah did not believe that the Ninevites were worthy of God's mm. forgiveness. Right, right. He didn't believe that they should be saved. He didn't want God to spare them, so Jonah wrestled with going to Nineveh mm -hmm. and did not want them to receive God's deliverance. Mm. And Jonah uh, 4 and 1 says, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly. He was very upset mm. and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country. Therefore, I fled before unto Tarshish, right. for I knew that thou art a gracious God right. and merciful, mm. slow to anger, Woo! and of great kindness, yes. and repentest thee of the evil. Listen, we are all flying on President Trump's plane. Right, right. And Whether if we know the plane not. crashes, we crash. Yes, yes. If the flight is aborted, we are aborted. That's right. That's so we right. want him to succeed. Yes. We want him to prosper because right. if he if he prospers in the work that he does, if we pray for him, then we will prosper. Amen. And see, when go Jonah went off, God told him to go to Nineveh. Nineveh was only 500 miles from where he was. That's right. The man ended up going to Tarsus 2,000 miles. That's right. Sailed across <laughs> the mighty uh, uh, Mediterranean <laughs> Sea. So, and your point is so strong that, that, that these people who are resisting uh, the, the president, and, and, and you know, uh, President Trump is up against everybody. Yes. Because I believe that there are Democrats and Republicans right. who do not want him to succeed right. because they don't want this, this political neophyte who just jumped into the race. Right. There's no way in this world they're going to work with him as he solves some of these problems. But right quick as we read this, and it looks like we're going to do a third session here, he says, as you P-R-E-Y, -P -P pray on the most vulnerable, you are violating the sacred principles of religion. You know there is a text in Amos chapter 2 that says religious and moral hypocrisies look uh, look like that says uh, religious and immoral hypocrisies look like when a nation of political leaders will buy and sell understanding people when they when they will do nothing when they would do anything excuse me to make money and when they sell the poor for a pair of shoes when they will will grind the penniless into the mm. dirt and shove the the luckless into the ditch and exhort the poor, uh, extort the poor. That is uh, an an actual text. It is true that we should not take advantage of the poor. Right. It is true, but the the question is: is the only solution to dealing with the poor in the country? the way the progressives and the liberals think we should do. Right. Um, since the, I was it 64, somewhere in there, the, the war on poverty, we've spent upwards of 22 trillion mm. in this country trying to alleviate policy. I think the, the policy, the, 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 the poor, the, to eliminate the poor rather, right. Right. and the poor, the, the, the poverty rate was right. around 19% at that time. Mm -hmm. And it's at $22 trillion later, yeah. it's around uh, 15, it fluctuates between 15 and 13% today. Mm. Now that's $22 trillion right. of being thrown at a thing right. with basically no movement. That's right. Could it be 
that perhaps there is a different approach. Mm -hmm. Could it be that just because a person believed that there should be competition and where, where we, could, we could go beyond state lines and shop for coverage, does that mean that we just hate the poor and we want the poor to die mm -hmm. because we don't believe that the Affordable Care Act is the best solution? Mm -hmm. That's what I want to talk about. I think that we should be open to all solutions. And we're going to talk about what is true theological male practice. <laughs>